Hi everyone, so today we're going to be talking about CRM or customer relationship management. The idea behind customer relationship management is that rather than focusing on the transactional nature of marketing, you instead focus on the relationship that you're building with the customers that you uh, are acquiring, right? Uh, and a kind of a traditional model of customer relationship management starts with the idea that you first begin by marketing to an audience, a, a target market, if you will, right? And by marketing to those, some people show interest in your content, right? They might uh, click on an ad, they might uh, sign up for a newsletter, right? Something along those lines where they, they've expressed an interest. They then become what we call a prospect, right? Uh, so they've now shown some interest, and you can develop that prospect and work with it. Eventually, you convert them. They actually make a purchase. They make you you, you sell them something, right? Um, and then they become a customer of yours, right? And then over time, if they continue to make purchases and if you continue to have interactions with them, they you, by on the basis of that communication, they become what we call a bonded customer, someone who's associated with your brand, right? And then hopefully with continued. Um, customer service with continued cross-selling to other platforms, upselling to new products, bringing them back and keeping them along, they become an actual advocate of your brand, someone who is willing to speak out and uh, uh, project uh, that your brand is actually a good thing and that uh, brings in new customers as well. Right? Um, and in fact, uh, Seth Godin, the marketing guru, refers to that notion at the top is actually flipping the funnel. Right? You, you take someone who has gone through the normal purchase funnel and you eventually create them, um, you give them a megaphone to talk about your brand to other people and to win them over. Right? Um, so this is the traditional model. And in order to do this, you need to keep track of data of how those individuals have interacted with your company over time. Now there's a number of different touch points that you have to keep track of those interactions. So before the purchase, you can think of things like social media, email, word of mouth, other kinds of things that they might have interactions with uh, with regarding to your brand and your company, right? Uh, during the actual purchase, right, they have, they have to experience the packaging, they have to experience the product itself, they have the, the store or the office where they purchase, it might be a digital store, right, they have events where that might happen, they have the invoice process and the uh, web process that they go through in order to actually acquire the object. And then after our service, and then after the purchase, right, you have additional ways you can communicate with them, right, via newsletter, social media, and of course, customer service following up on things that they've done. And one of the most important things that people think about in the space of CRM here is the loyalty program, right? The ability to track what individuals have purchased and when they have purchased over time, right? So all of this involves you tracking that individual's journey, right? That individual's experience with their interactions. Um, and so the question naturally arises, what data should you be tracking about the consumers? Well, first of all, you should make sure it's commercially relevant, right? You don't need to track data, and you probably shouldn't for a lot of liability and legal reasons, any data that's not relevant to actually transacting and, and, and continuing the relationship with the customer. Um, you should definitely capture any contact details, especially uh, about their preferred channels, right? So. Um, Evidence after evidence, research after research, shows that consumers are more likely to interact with you if you use the way that they want to interact. So if they contact you on social media, do your best to reach out to them on social media. If they contact you on a phone call, do your best to reach out to them on a phone call. Uh, this seems to be the best way to make sure that your consumers continually stay in or involved with the communication. Uh, in addition, you should make sure that the data that you're collecting can be managed by the customers. Now, this is in some ways a natural, no-nonsense solution, right? Like if you have a bunch of information about the address, about their email contacts, about their phone numbers, right? You should provide a nice, easy-to-access way for them to change and update that information whenever possible. This is important for a number of reasons. First of all, because of the fact that you... Um, need to have that accurate information in order to provide communications to them. But second, it also gives them the ability to remove information from your data set that they don't want you to have. And that's perfectly okay, right? It's better to maintain an honest communication than it is to have uh, information that they, the consumer might not want you to have. Um, record communications with consumer, of course, making sure that they're aware of that. This is why you often hear, you know, this call is recorded for quality assurance, right? Because you want to make sure that there's, if there's anything in that call or if there's anything in that contact experience that you can build upon for later use, that you're recording it and making sure it's keeping track of, right? 
You can explore novel data that might provide value to the relationship. So for instance, um, if you're a company that sells uh, travel experiences, right, and you primarily have interacted with that person in a business context, right, it sometimes might be worthwhile to find out about what their leisure experiences are if that's something you also provide, right? Even if that's not something that you would normally inquire about in that particular context. So this is where, you know, some of this gets a little, you don't want to be creepy, you don't want to be um, um, too forward in this space, but if there's a natural context in which to explore that, con that conversation, make sure you have it. Definitely respect privacy laws, right? So the EU's GDPR, the General Data Privacy Regulation, which is much stricter than any of the current regulations applicable in the United States, are becoming the default, uh, the default standard for a lot of companies. And the reason why is because many internet-based companies do business both in the US and overseas. And so you might as well always be using whatever the, the, the strictest standards of privacy regulation are, especially on something like the internet where um, you may not be exactly sure where the data is coming from and where the purchases are coming from necessarily. So what data can you track? What data should you be tracking, right? Well, there's obviously tradition, what we call traditional CRM, which is the transaction-oriented data. This is what say purchases have they made and when have they made them and how much was it and, and things along those lines. You can also enhance that data by doing data mining, right? So now let's say I have data about a whole bunch of consumers, right? And I have a, about making a whole bunch of transactions, right? Well, then I can start to predict patterns, right? Like this is a, type, this is a product that's normally bought in the springtime, right? And I can try and predict when those kinds of events are gonna happen again, and I can gear up for them, right? Because usually if you're seeing patterns along those lines, then there's probably similar purchases being made to some of your competitors, which means you have the ability, if you have the advertising and marketing wherewithal, to get out in front of that and, attract, and, and, and ahead of time, attract those customers away from your competitors. Right? And one source of this that you might look at is analytics data. How are people navigating your website? Um, analyze where they're clicking, what they're looking at. And, if you've seen the video on Google Analytics in this course, right, it kind of talks about some of those things you might be able to track. And then one of the big interesting area that's coming up is what we call social CRM, right? And this is the ability to tie the normal CRM data that you might have to the social media presence of your user, right? Not only does this allow your, your consumer to interact with you on social media, but by in looking at what they're posting on social media publicly, of course, right? Uh, what they're posting on social media, you can get deeper insights into who your consumers are. For instance, if your consumers are also following other lifestyle brands, if you're a lifestyle brand, or following other lifestyle brands, you can look at those lifestyle brands and try and understand a little bit more about who your consumers are. So, how do you use the CRM? Well, there's a number of different ways. Campaign analysis is obviously a big way to do it, right? Did your marketing campaign do better with certain segments over others? Were there certain influentials and advocates who really passed on your information? If so, you should highlight them in your CRM for preferred um, experiences, right? Preferred uh, treatment and maybe giving them out promotional um, products, right, ahead of time and things along those lines, right? Personalization, right? You can start to take into account events that you know have happened in the past and make sure that the communications and recommendations you're making in the future are related to those events. Now, small caveat, small note on this, I always like to mention, right? To do this well, you need to think about why you have that information about them. So a classic example, and one I just saw posted on Twitter a few days ago, was someone who says, I bought a toilet seat on, on Amazon, and now all of a sudden Amazon's constantly showing me ads for additional toilet seats. It's not like I need 30 toilet seats. I, I bought one because it was broken. I'm not a collector of toilet seats, right? So trying to figure out how to do that personalization, right? Um, there are certain products that are more utility products. You need them once and you're done. And so recommending them again and again is not going to solve any additional problems, right? You need to think specifically about what the consumer, why the consumer did that action and what that might mean for what you're going to recommend for them in the future. Event monitoring. So you can look at what, so if there's a particular event that affects your vertical or your industry, Right? You could monitor the data in your system to try and anticipate it or to predict it will happen in the future. Right? So I remember talking to a, um, a, uh, a home products, so the gardens and uh, home to, uh, you know, outside the home kind of hardware store and things like that company at one point. And they were very interested in trying to understand 
when do people start thinking about spring, right? And this is something that if you're monitoring your weblog data, if you're monitoring your interactions with your customers, right? You could look at this and then you can try and make sure that, you know, maybe even a couple days before consumers are starting to think about spring, you're out in front and have that, that spring catalog available. And that kind of relates to the next one, which is about predictive modeling, using the patterns of behavior you've seen in the past to predict the future. Better understand, you know, customer lifetime value is one good example of this too, right? So maybe this customer who's just interacted with you once looks a lot like a bunch of customers who spent a lot of money with your company, right? If that's the case, then you might want to think earlier about upselling them and kind of trying to get them locked in. The benefits of good CRM is that you have increased revenue and profitability, hopefully improves customer satisfaction and loyalty. Um, the customer service experience is a lot better because the, 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 the customer service agent already knows ahead of time something about that customer because they can look at their file, read up on it, and understand. Um, decreased acquisition costs, right? If I, if I could try and guess what this customer is likely to be worth in terms of customer lifetime value and whether or not they're likely to need a prospect for my company, I can have a better idea as to whether or not I should be spending money on them. So there's a bunch of tools out there, right? There's traditionally marketing collections like sales data, panel data, right? There's service interactions, there's loyalty programs, which um, have been a boon for certain companies. Some companies have been able to do this very well. Uh, for instance, I, I heard, uh, was talking to some uh, Starbucks executives a couple of years ago, and they said that over 50% of all sales at Starbucks were done using a Starbucks card, right? The amount of data they have, about one half of their customers is amazing, right? They can really get a deep insight into who those customers are and why they come to Starbucks on a regular basis. You can build your own apps and then track what people are doing with those apps. You can use text messaging if that's something that's useful for that particular target market. And then of course, live chat and chatbots, right? Having uh, chatbots where they can ask questions, having um, um, uh, live agents who can interact and chat with the customer, right? And then using those records to data mine and to feed into additional information. And of course, social CRM, which we discussed, right, provides a really powerful way to tie a bunch of this data in, right, gather information about the social media presence of that user. You can use it for customer service. The, the uh, travel uh, industry has been great about this, both the, you know, the airlines, hotels, and um, the rental car companies. They're really, really good about responding directly over uh, Twitter, over Facebook, et cetera, to customer service complaints and interactions. Research that's been done uh, by marketing professors has shown that the social customer service uh, interactions increase uh, customer satisfaction, but they also encourage some users to seek redress more often. So it's something you need to weigh in your mind as to whether or not you should be um, uh, reaching out to this particular customer. And of course, online reputation management, right? Like if something blows up, with your company's brand, right? Um, there's some brand attack that occurs where a bunch of people are talking about an issue. You know, maybe it's a, you're a chocolate company and they're talking about palm oil being uh, un, uh, harvested unsustainably. If you know who your customers are and you have their social media presences, then you can see, hey, maybe this is a complaint that's coming from outside my customer base, right? I might still think about addressing it, but if it's coming from outside my customer base, maybe I can consider prioritizing it in a different manner or maybe I consider addressing it in a different way. So in many ways, CRM and having a detailed record of the information about your consumers really helps your brand do better. Uh, and trying to collect and gather that data can be a difficult task, but it can really pay off in the long run. Thanks.